recently a, a project by Campaign Zero was sent out to a lot of municipalities called Eight Can't Wait. And it addressed policies that it suggested would eliminate or re greatly reduce violence through law enforcement contacts with the public. And Jeff and I thought this would be a good time for to give you and the public some information on what's going on in Shelton specific and what we're doing here. We put measures in place within the last five years that address many of the issues that are currently being discussed throughout the nation. We will commit to current relevant training and education for our staff and commit to being members of the community, not just law enforcement. And I think we've proven that many times. <clears throat> As listed in our annual report, we made over 14,000 calls for service, which if you totaled everything, about 20,000 contacts with the public. Um, and that use of, it resulted in use of force 0.003% of the time. And use of force with us is a very large umbrella. It can be anything non-compliant. Um, so it's as simple as if somebody refuses to put their hand behind their back and we have to forcefully pull a hand behind back, that's a reportable use of force in our policy. Um, we implemented body-worn cameras four years ago. Those have proved extremely valuable for all of us at, in, within the police department. We update our old policies with existing policies with the current best practices, aligning with case law and training to go with those policies and ensure how to know how to use them. Officers get what's called daily trading bulletins here to go with their Lexapol policy. In other words, every time a new policy comes out, they're tested on it, they have to take a quiz on it, they get readings on it, and every month new daily training bulletins come up over old policies, so they must go back again and listen to it, quiz on it, and pass it. And that's all documented. We received WASPIC accreditation in 2019, which is a pretty big accomplishment. Um, it included outside auditing of reporting, training, and use of force, where outside auditors came in and basically probed our entire department and said, we are using best practices. Continuing training has gone on regarding implicit bias, how to interact with underrepresented community members, de-escalation, using many types of education, including scenario-based training that aligns with our current policies and laws. So it's not just throwing out the policies and here's a piece of paper, read it. We're using scenario-based training, video training, anything we can use to get that across. I think a recent example of what the trust has done in our community was a recent downtown march. There was two different groups of differing viewpoints. And they were for the most part respectful of each other's rights. And both groups contacted us ahead of time as a police department, said, this is what we wanna do. And like I said, for the most part, they were very respectful. And it was nice to get the contacts after saying thank you very much for all your support. <clears throat> Our policy prohibits the use of any pain compliance technique unless the officer has been specific, specifically trained and or certified in that use of force. We do not train in the use of the carotid or LVNR technique. This would include the commonly misused terms that are going around now of choke or strangle holds. All officers have been through and continue to receive updated training regarding de-escalation, including scenario-based, such as the live action training with the force option simulator. Some of you remember from a few years ago that we invited the council to come down. We invited the media to be involved in. Some will call it a shoot, don't shoot scenario. It's a force option simulator. Our firearms training incorporates giving warnings anytime we use our taser or firearm, if at all possible. So if you're ever out at our range during training days, <clears throat> excuse me, you're gonna hear a loud yelling over most of what's going on out there. And that is every time that gun comes out, they are giving verbal warnings and instructions. That's incorporated in all of our training. We do exhaust all alternatives as mentioned in the thing earlier. It's called de-escalation. Um, our officers are trained in every tool they have, including verbal techniques. But to just blanketly say exhaust all alternatives, exhaust all alternatives in every circumstances would put us all at risk if we use certain scenarios. We do have policies in place that could make it mandatory to intervene, even if the potential is there. It talks about even leading up to the incident. And we are already taking care of those. Shelton policies have prohibited shooting at moving vehicles unless the vehicle is an imminent deadly threat since 2015. The use of force continuum that they mentioned in the report is an example of exhaust all alternatives in our opinion, and it's not been around since 1990s. Um, the use of force continuum is strictly about force escalation, and it can cause actually more force issues than it could, could prevent. Instead of having the officers look at the big picture of how to solve a problem, all the use of force continuum did in the 90s was say, go to the next level, go to the next level, go to the next level, instead of what can we do to resolve the problem. 
We not only require all use of force incidents to be documented thoroughly, these reports go through all supervision levels, including the chief. We also have a review panel to discuss the use of force during the incident. <clears throat> we are also audited through WASPIC accreditation. And furthermore, we address the use of force in our annual report and our practices and policies are in line with the RCW definition of necessary force, which means that no reasonably effective alternative to the use of force exists and that the amount of force used was reasonable to affect the lawful purpose intended. As you can see, we've incorporated these topics in our current training practices and policies several years ago. We are ahead of that. We will continue to review and adopt changes in the policing and legislative continue to adapt modern policing. 